Conservation planning aims to direct decisions about the location, formation and management of conservation areas. These conservation areas are managed for the vast biodiversity and its natural value. In this video, I will be focusing on conservation planning within Mongolia by analyzing its current conservation status, its protected areas and the very species and habitats that need protecting. Mongolia is a landlocked country in East Central Asia. It is bordered by Russia to the north and China to the west, south and east. The total land area of Mongolia is 1,565,864 square kilometers, of which 269,427 square kilometers is protected. 17% of the country is protected with a total of 106 protected areas. The wildlife in Mongolia is very diverse with 139 species of mammals, 450 species of birds of which 331 are migratory and 119 are resident within Mongolia all year round, 22 species of reptiles, 6 species of amphibians and 76 freshwater fish species. Mongolia has a range of unique habitats, ranging from taiga forests in the north, desert steppes in the center, and the wilderness of the Gobi Desert in the south. Each of these habitats comprises of many interesting, highly threatened species, such as the Bactrian camel, the long-eared jaboa, and the Asiatic wild ass. After the collapse of the communist government in the early 1990s, Mongolia's economy has changed significantly. This has resulted in overwhelming effects and huge implications for the Mongolian flora and fauna. Even though 17% of the country is protected, the effectiveness of these protected areas and the effects of threats in these areas are not fully understood. Various species have shown a decline over the last few years. There may be as little as 22 Gobi bears left in the wild and there are fewer than 1,000 Bactrian camels still in existence. As mentioned previously, 17% of Mongolia is protected, which amounts to 106 protected areas. These include 6 UNESCO Biosphere Reserves, 30 Nature Reserves, 14 Monuments, 31 national conservation parks, 14 strictly protected areas, and 11 Ramsar sites, which are wetlands of international importance. The Mongolian Altai Cyan is famous for its unique fauna and flora. Most of the species in this area are endemic to the region and are endangered worldwide. Some species found in this area include the swan goose, golden eagle, black storks, snow leopards, wild sheep, and the Mongolian saga. The Gobi is one of the last great wilderness areas in the world and is threatened by growing communities and increased mining activities in the area. There is an urgent need to address the growing challenge of habitat degradation and fragmentation, but there is insufficient information about the habitats and the biodiversity of this region to understand the effects of these disturbances on the Gobi ecosystem and its key species. Due to the unique habitats within Mongolia, various species are endemic and are threatened by habitat loss. All the mammals that are considered for protection were sourced from the IUCN Red List. Species conservation forms an integral part of Mongolian conservation efforts. 33 species were analyzed, but only the high priority ones are discussed. WWF Mongolia has undertaken a five-year conservation plan that will focus on conserving high priority species. They have identified four key species of wildlife as high priority targets. They include the snow leopard, Altai argali, or the wild sheep, the Sega antelope, and the gazelle in eastern Mongolia. The WWF in Mongolia has been working to protect natural habitats in order to conserve the biodiversity. 
two keystone species have been identified in Mongolia. These are the Equius ferris, which is the Przolski's horse, and the Marmota cerberica, which is the Serbian marmot. The Serbian marmot is a social rodent that is found throughout Northern Asia. Due to the over-harvesting of fur, meat, and body parts that have been traded illegally, these species have declined drastically in Mongolia. It is considered to be a keystone species because it, its burrows seems to represent an important resource for many other species, including carnivores. As a result of over-harvesting, there is a concern as to how the impact of the decline will affect other species. Marmots are very important prey for some carnivores and raptors, and evidence suggests that they serve a key ecosystem function through their extensive colonial burrowing systems. These burrows aids in soil renewal, influences plant community dynamics, provide shelter and habitat resources for some carnivores. Przewalski's horse, or Taki as it is known to the Mongolians, is endemic and is currently listed as very rare and highly threatened. They are amongst the most threatened wildlife species in the world, with a total population of only 1,500 individuals. They are the only surviving genuine wild horses that occur in the wild. They were once considered a keystone species in the steppe ecosystem, along with other herbivores such as wild sheep and antelope. They were previously extinct in the wild, but have recently been reintroduced and have adapted well, displaying their natural social behavior and withstanding the harsh winters. A systematic conservation plan was used for Mongolia. This included the use of hexagons. The ecological approach could not be used as it was, as it was not compatible with Marxan. Data files were downloaded from DivaGIS website, including administrative data, elevation, rails, roads, water bodies, and masked land cover. Masked land cover was added to the GIS software, together with the admin zero of Mongolia, to provide a country border. The masked files were exported from Diva into a GC, where it was imported as a shape file. The data was downloaded and imported to Idrisi to create the final map including rails and roads. A legend was downloaded from the Global Land Cover 2000 and applied to the final map. Once the legend was applied, a palette was created to make the map appear realistic. Using the final map, all natural land use areas were removed by reclassing it. Protected areas were downloaded from the Protected Planet website for Mongolia. Using ArcView GIS, hexagons were produced based on the administration area of the country. These hexagons were then imported to Idrisi. Species distribution of various animals were downloaded from the IUCN website as well as from GBIF. This was imported into Idrisi converting the shapefile into a vector and then a raster. A passes and a tenure map was then created. Once all the information was complete, Marksan was initiated using the information from the tutorial 6.6. .6. A form was created using Windows Movie Maker, which was initiated through a digital storyboard. It incorporated a PowerPoint presentation as well as images from Google Earth Pro and permission from the Creative Commons website using all our GIS information. The first map run through Marksan shows the hexagons with the current protected areas. The information run through Marksan the second time shows potential areas that were conserved. The second map shown here indicates the best solution Marksan has given based on the various species that need protecting. Moxan was run multiple times to ensure that the maximum amount of species are being protected. The initial target was set at 50% and was then reduced to increase the protection of species. The final target was 15% and only one species remained unprotected, namely Gazal subguterosa. According to the results in the Moxan log file, 
the total area of the existing reserve is 459,218 square kilometers and the area of the newly added reserves is 144,244 square kilometers. The total area of the final reserve is 603,462 square kilometers. This map has protected areas overlaid to show which areas other than the current protected areas Marksam has suggested to conserve the species. When we analyze the best solution map, it is evident that many of the areas suggested by Marksam already forms part of the current protected areas. This can be seen from the first best solution map. What is significant about the second map is that the best solution is to extend the current home range of the areas by creating corridors or by enlarging areas. These corridors will allow for free movement of animals from one protected area to another. This will assist in conservation efforts as there are quite a few species that have a fragmented distribution as a result of habitat loss. If the corridors are implemented, it will assist in obtaining a wider range and dispersal of these species which could reduce fragmentation. There is only the one species that is not protected, namely the gazelle Sabgutirosa. This species is found across the Middle East and Asia. Due to poaching, their numbers have declined significantly and has been listed as vulnerable by the IUCN. They are full migrant animals and are able to move to various habitats. Due to the fact that it is migrating and has a wide distribution, it is possible that this species can be protected in other regions of the Middle East and Asia. In conclusion, from the information gathered, it is evident that Mongolia has plans in place to conserve the endemic and threatened species by partnering with organizations such as WWF. In order for them to maintain their current species range, they will have to consider the outcomes of Marksan, whereby they need to extend the home range of some protected areas and consider corridors which will facilitate the free movement of animals in the area. In this way, Mongolia is able to preserve these species for both current and future generations.